Hello there, it's Sandeep. And in this video, we're going to continue our series on fighting the London system. And so our method for doing this is playing an early c5. So after d4, d5, bishop f4, the London system, uh, we play c5. And uh, if you download Stockfish and let it calculate in this position deep enough, it really likes to move c5. It challenges for the center. And when you research this, um, uh, this variation, you'll notice that when London system players do their normal things like play e3, c3, knight f3, knight d2, uh, you can put white under a lot of pressure or at the very least get a comfortable position for black. Um, and so in a previous video, we looked at d take c5, which is kind of dubious but playable. It's the fourth most popular option in the Lee chess database. And in this video, we're going to look at e3 and c3 specifically. So you can watch these videos as standalone. Um, but uh, the full playlist is in the description below. So now, after e3 or c3, they often kind of transpose into each other. The top engine move is e3. Um, I like to play the move knight c6. And uh, why is that? Because now after, if, sorry, if white decides to take on c5, d takes c5, this is a mistake because now after e5, the bishop gets pushed back to g3. And after bishop takes c5, you have two monster pawns in the center. And if you turn on the engine, it favors black. Okay, so a very, very comfortable position. So knight c, knight c6 has a positional feel. It prevents white from releasing tension uh, in the center. You can leave your thoughts about it below. There are other moves. Uh, and now you can see in the Lee Chess database, this is everyone, not master level players. People play the move c3. And uh, once this happens, I like the move queen b6. And this pawn is hanging. So often when we are faced situations like this we wonder whether we're grabbing a poison pawn and there are three criteria that i like to go through when evaluating a situation like this number one i like to i like to ask myself is the dark square bishop outside of the pawn chain yes it is in which case it cannot get back to d2 and harass the black queen if need be okay number two is there a is there a pawn on c3 yes there is in which case there cannot be a knight on c3 and the knight cannot execute this b5 maneuver in which case black is most probably lost so as an illustration instead of c3 let's say your opponent played knight c3 you've got to look after this d5 pawn so let's say you play knight f6 knight f3 queen b6 and now let's just say bishop b2 this is a huge blunder because white has the follow-up knight b5 and this is a threat there's no good way to deal with it. If you turn on the engine, it's plus four. So white is just completely winning. And that's all because there was a knight on c3 that could jump to b5. So that second criteria was, is there a pawn on c3? So yes, there is. And the third criteria I like to ask myself in this queen b6 situation, eyeing up a pawn on b2, is, is the b7 pawn protected? Yes, it is, by the c8 bishop. So... In scenarios where the rook slides to b1 and displaces the queen, it cannot land on the seventh rank because that pawn is protected. Okay, so these are kind of safety uh, criteria that I go through in my mind. And so it's a real threat to take this pawn. So let's say white just wastes a move, knight f3, we just take the pawn. And now this rook is hanging. So let's say you play knight d2, knight f6, develop. So what engines hate is when you try to then quickly get your queen out of there, um, in which case you're wasting time and, and white is winning. And uh, now what, what is white going to do? Let's say rook b1. We take another pawn. Let's say bishop b5. Then bishop d7. And uh, if you take take, we're still guarding this pawn. And uh, the queen has an escape route this way. So taking on this b2 pawn is a real threat. Uh, and so you can see here in the Leech's database, what most people do is they play queen b3. And uh, here's where it gets really fun for black because I like the move c4. Uh, that's completely fine by the engines. I think it could be a top move you might want to check. And c4 has a positional feel. It also lays some traps. And so what c4 does is basically says, well, this bishop can never now go to d3, can never hit this h7 pawn. So there's a safety aspect to it, in which case the bishop has to go to e2, or if white wants to waste time, go to g2. Okay. Um, and uh, if white takes, then that's fine, because we can now play b5, connect the pawns, and uh, we've activated our rook, and if you turn on the engine, it favors black. 
So after c4, you can see here most people are going to retreat. I think that's a very good move. You have queen c2. And uh, here come some of the tricks and traps in this variation, which I really enjoy. And so most people in this line play bishop f5. And this is a huge mistake. Because what black is saying is if you take my bishop, I'm taking your pawn and your rook. But it doesn't work. It's the right idea, but it's executed in the wrong way. So as an illustration, after queen takes f5, queen takes b2, white has the follow-up, queen takes d5. And now after queen takes a1, white has queen b5. Threatening to take here and then one of these pieces. And uh, white is completely winning. And uh, if you, I don't know, if you castle after bishop takes c4, I think if you turn on the engine, it favors white. You have active pieces around the black king. It's very dangerous. Uh, not to mention the fact that black is underdeveloped. So this bishop immediate bishop f5 idea doesn't work because the queen gets to d5, gets to b5. So you might say, well, I play knight f6 first. But that doesn't work because after you play knight e2, you play bishop f5, that just hangs a piece. Queen takes f5, and now queen takes b2. Queen gets back. You're just hanging material, right? So you just gave up your bishop for no reason. So how do you execute this bishop f5 move? And if you turn on the engine, it loves this move e5. Just basically hang a pawn. Because now after bishop takes e5, you now have bishop f5. Because if white takes, queen takes f5, then you have queen takes b2. And um, there's no way the queen can get to d5 and b5 because its own dark squared bishop is in the way. And so you have to be a little bit careful before you take this rook. So after knight f3, if you take the rook, then white has the follow-up queen c2 and the black queen is trapped. Uh, instead, you want to play the move knight e7. Remove the white queen from this diagonal. So let's say queen h5. And now... Stronger than just taking the rook is to first deliver a check. So queen c1 check, king e2, queen b2 check, and then we take the rook, black is completely winning. White has lost his right to castle, white's king is in the center, black can castle still if it wants to. Um, so that's how you execute this bishop f5 move. Um, and um, okay, so just a word of warning here is that, uh, of course, after queen b6 and eyeing up this pawn, yeah, there'll be some some variation, something that your opponent will do, which might be a complete mistake or inaccuracy, where you'll do something poor and maybe you'll get your pieces trapped or whatever. That's chess. I like to play sharp lines. I like to go for it. Okay. And so the engines definitely think it's a threat here for black to take this pawn. Uh, and so I like this line a lot with queen b6. And uh one final thing here is that um, after queen c2, let's say after queen b6, white may want to uh, protect the pawn with queen c2. Here, just go with g6. Uh, g6, fiend keto, bishop f5. And uh, you have to be careful about playing these bishop f5 tricks because uh, white is going to have follow-ups like d takes c5. And remember, that wasn't an option before because the pawn was on uh, c4. Okay, so these tricks don't necessarily always work. So you have to be careful. Now, there's one other variation to consider here. Uh, instead of c3, is if they go with knight f3. And so here, you have to be careful about things like queen b6. It doesn't really work because after queen b6, white just has the follow-up knight c3 and this pawn is hanging. So it doesn't really work. Um, so... What I recommend in this position, position is just a take. So C takes D5. Sorry. C takes D4. E takes D4. Bishop G4. And now there's a remove the defender tactic. You know, obviously, if uh, white isn't paying attention, H3, let's take, and queen takes. Then you have knight takes D4, and this is a threat. You turn on the engine, black is winning. So after bishop G4, sorry, after C takes D4, C takes d4, e takes d4, bishop g4. White is kind of forced to play passively, play c3, knight d2. And uh, if we go with this e6, close the pawn chain, we have knight f6, um, you know, bishop d6, castle short, rook c8. It's just a very easy position 
for black to play and you're going to be very very comfortable but by far the most exciting line for me uh, and you can leave your thoughts below is when they choose to play c3 and you can follow up with queen b6 so thank you very much for your time and um, if you have any thoughts on that do leave them below